Hi everyone, in this video I'll discuss Season of Migration to the North by Tayyip Saleh, the greatest Sudanese author. It is considered a classic novel of African and Arabic literature. In this video I'll summarize it for you, then I'll analyze its themes and storytelling. As usual, let me first tell you some fascinating facts about Sudan and Mr. Tayyip Saleh himself. Sudan, his full name is Bilad al Sudan, which means the land of the blacks in Arabic. In its capital, Khartoum means elephant's trunk. It was a British colony and part of Egypt until it got independence in 1955. In 2011, Sudan was divided into two countries the Arab North and the Sub Saharan African South. The North being mostly Muslims and the South being mostly Christians or believers of native animist religions. Sudan is famous for the River Nile, having more pyramids than Egypt, more sand and extreme heat and dryness. Uh, Tayyip Saleh was born in 1929 and died in 2009, meaning he lived for exactly 80 years, if my math is correct. He studied at the University of London and worked for the BBC World Service Arabic section. Now, back to the novel. It was first published in 1966 in Arabic. The novel was banned in Sudan due to its sexual content, but now it's available. What is the story? Our narrator is a man who returns to his village in Sudan after years of studying in England. He meets a new man in the village, and he doesn't recognize him, so he piques his interest. One night, when they're both drunk, Mustafa, this new person in the village, lets his guard down and recites an English poem. Our narrator becomes quite suspicious. Who is this man who lives in the small village in Sudan yet recites English poem? Later, he confronts Mustafa and Mustafa tells him his story. As a child, he grew up without a father and a very hands-off mother. One day, he meets a man who recruits him to attend an English school set up by the British. At this school, he excels so much so that he's soon sent to Cairo to study there. And from there, he ends up in a university in England. This all sounds a very heartwarming story of a village boy who rose to become an excellent economist for the British colonial authority. But it turns out this is not a story of success, but a big failure. It's a tale of sexual addiction. While in England, Mustafa cannot stop sleeping with women, English women, white women to be specific. He weaves short and tall stories about his background to seduce these women. He plays on the exotic stories that English were craving. Animals, wild nature, desert, lush green jungles. He lies to his teeth to sleep with those women. Once they find out, it's too much for them. This leads them to depression and suicide. But the final nail in most of us coffin is when he falls in love with one particular woman. He is obsessed. Finally, his obsession is rewarded. She marries him, but things get more complicated. So she refuses sex. When she finally gives in during that sexual encounter, he inserts a knife into her and kills her. He's sentenced to seven years in prison. After his release, he returns to Sudan and marries a woman and they have two kids and they settle in this small village where our narrative narrator meets him. After his confession to our narrator, he asks the narrator to be the guardian for his wife and kids. This is a bit suspicious, but we find out soon after Mustafa is drowned in a flooding of the Nile, a rare occurrence in this part of Sudan. There is a hint that he might have taken his own life, but we can't be sure. Months later, Mustafa's widow, Hosna, is forced to marry an old man, Rais, who has multiple wives, but she refuses to allow him to sleep with her, but he persists. The final act is that Hosna murders this old man. This act of murder is a sort of feminist revenge on the endless suffering men cause women in this novel. An act of defiance by Hosna not to be tamed by a man. Hosna had asked our narrator to marry her so other men won't come after her, but he had refused as he felt they might have been construed as too opportunistic on his part. So the end, the guilt and the nightmarish events are a bit too much for our narrator, who remains unnamed, and he attempts suicide by the end. But at the very last minute, he changes his mind and gives life another chance. However, we cannot be sure if he survives the suicide or not. It appears he does survive, because otherwise, who told us this story? The major theme of this novel is colonialism. People suggest that this was written in response to The Heart of Darkness by Joseph Conrad. In this novel, Mustafa is somehow similar to Kurt, not for resources or slavery, but for sex. Every woman he sleeps with seems like a conquest for him. 
He has a fetish for white skin. Back in Sudan, sleeping with a white woman symbolizes power and prestige. It's almost unimaginable that a Sudanese or an African man can seduce a white woman in Africa. But in England, once he makes that leap, he cannot stop himself anymore. He lies and he invents stories to seduce these women. What is different is that he's exoticizing himself. He talks about animals, wilderness, and the Nile, and anything that the English are fascinated about. White British people love stories about other the places and Mustafa plays the game by luring them to these imaginary places and lands. The allure of the other is at the heart of this novel. Sexual conquest and military conquests and history are symbolized together and the issue of black against white is played in this novel. But I think it goes a little bit deeper. It's the issue between men and women in general. The novel, by highlighting the black man seducing white women in England, in fact draws our attention to the fact that the colonists not only took the land and resources from African, they also picked the women in those places. But since exploiting the women in those places appear too insignificant in the face of political, economic, and cultural devastation they caused, this novel highlights that as the most important part of the story. This novel shows that the white men treated women for worse than Mustafa had done in London. The difference is that Mustafa had to lie and invent fiction in order to sleep with these women. But the colonists either made similar promises or in most situations used force. Another theme of the novel is that love is a dangerous game. At worst, it leads to murder and suicide. Once Mustafa become obsessed with Jean Morris, the woman he kills, he thinks there is no backing off. She, on her part, taunts him and refuses him despite the fact that they are married. It also alludes to other forms of love. Love for one's country or religion often lead people to kill other people. So, love is not a safe thing. There is an issue with the English education. Mustafa is educated by the British from his school in his village to Cairo and then England. He has no anchor and his mother is very hands off. She leaves him to make his own decision at a very young age. He has nobody to guide him except the English and the English education system. Mustafa loved white women, white skin. I suggest this because he was educated by the British. He was brought up in a system where being white was better. He also loved how white women smelled. He loved the way they empowered him the way they bought into his stories and lies. When the narrator visit Mustafa's house, there is not a single book in Arabic, all in English. So which suggests that he was completely immersed in the English culture. I don't know why this obsession with white skin was due to his education, but it's true that when he met this white woman in Cairo, and she was so kind and so nice to him, that she made a huge impression on him. He didn't have a father and the mother wasn't very attentive, but his obsession with women in general cannot be due to his English education, I think. There's another man in the village, Rais, who is as obsessed with women as Mustafa, despite having no Western education. I guess Mustafa is different as he is an intellectual, a famous economist, but alienated from his own culture. The consequence of such alienation is depicted in this novel. But I still don't think Mustafa is a victim. I think it's both ways. He is to blame, the system that he was brought up in also to be blamed. Another symbolic thing is water. The river Nile flows north, so does Mustafa, hence the title Season of Migration to the North. Mustafa describes himself like a thirsty desert when he refers to his sexual desire for white women. It appears he wants to symbolize the continent, the Sahara Desert, as his own thirst, as his own internal desire. At the end, he drowns in the flooding of the Nile. Now, this unusual flood hadn't happened in 30 years, so his death is a bit of an anomaly and a mystery as well. Perhaps suicide. When you look at his life from Sudan to Egypt to England and back in the village, it is a drifting sort of life, as if he's not in control, just floats on a dinghy, first to the Nile, then the Mediterranean, then the North Sea, and so forth. And finally, in a flooding of the Nile. So most of her coming from a dry desert country is always thirsty. Season of Migration to the North is told in a very interesting way. Mustafa's story is told by an unnamed narrator, so we get to know a bit about him too. At first, I didn't really understand why we have a narrator at all, but later I understood that perhaps Mustafa couldn't really tell his own story. 
he was in a way forced to confess by the narrator. Despite being a really short novel, the middle section when the narrator leaves the main story aside and talks about his own journey to Khartoum and his life didn't really add much to the novel. Withholding the plot makes it a bit slow in the middle. It's like the camera cuts between Mustafa's tale and the narrator's tale. So this does make it a bit slow, I think. The way Mustafa's story ends is exactly like The Blind Owl by Sadiq Hidayat ends. A man kills his wife when they are both naked. Both husbands were finally allowed to consummate, but they insert a knife instead. It is also similar to Dostoevsky's Crime and Punishment, because in both books, the influence of Western ideas are very present in the lives of the characters. Both Mustafa and Raskolnikov are the products of Western ideas and Western education system. But in this short novel, 130 pages, we have about seven people dead. But you don't have to be tall to land great punches. It's a really powerful novel. The writing is exquisite. No surprise, it is a classic of both African and Arabic literature. I really enjoyed this novel. It is as powerful as Chinua Achebe's Things Fall Apart. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please let me know what you think about this novel. Have you read it? Or if you have any questions, please leave a comment. Thank you.